morning everyone and happy Sunday to you. It's my absolute joy and privilege to get to share with you a word of encouragement and a prophetic perspective for the season that we're in. Thank you for joining me this morning. Well I hope you've enjoyed this last week when Rachel has shared with us about change and how we navigate life's seasons and I believe there have been some real gems and real keys for us to take on board. But you know right from the beginning of this year we've already sensed that shift and change that's happening in the nations when we look at the big picture as well and certainly God is up to something great that new means new and so that means change will always be in the air as Rachel has said to us this week but you know when I was reflecting on season shifts and era changes in the Bible I was thinking that often they were marked with times of a census being taken. Think, for example, the story of the birth of Jesus. A decree went out across the Roman Empire from Caesar Augustus that everyone was to return to their hometown, a bit like us, that they were to go and to be locked down in their own home territory, home space with their family units. And that part of that was for a census to be taken, for them to be numbered, for them to be counted, for them to be registered and it's like God has always had seasons in time where he's taken a stock take of the nations and many prophetic voices are beginning to say that it feels like God is taking a divine stock take of the health of the nations in these days and that as his eyes roam across the nations he's looking for those who are up for the adventure of the new season. He's looking for those who like Isaiah will say God there is challenges on the horizon but God if you can use me pick me and I wonder whether you are up for that challenge you know we don't have to be feeling like we're extraordinary heroes with so much to offer we simply need to be available to God and I feel like he's been doing that stock take but also he's given us an opportunity to make an assessment of our own lives to do a census of where we are in life what we value what our priorities are what is going to be part of the next journey with us and what we perhaps want to leave behind and uh, it's interesting that the word census or numbering the people that is used throughout the scriptures also contained with it when it was done by God a sense of showing the roots of a nation or a society what is healthy what is unhealthy in order to restore and bring a realignment and I believe this season that we are in is also about a restoration that where we've fallen a little bit far from the standards of God or the moral and ethical lines that he would want God is saying let my plumb line be your lifeline in this season let me bring you back to my original design and even though he's doing something new we always find that the key for the new is in the age-old ways of God the pathways of the ancient ways the ways in which he has established things to work and that actually it's not by might nor by power nor by our clever strategies or our ways of making things work or the ways in which we can think our way out of a situation but that actually it depends on us going back to the relationships that really matter and the primary one of those is our relationship with God and so that as God is roaming the earth as it were taking a census helping us to assess the health of our situations our individual lives and the lives of our nations we will inevitably see some things bubble to the surface whether it's within us or within our nations that we are not particularly proud of. I don't know about you but this last week I've just been so grieved to see what's happened in the United States with some of the bubbling up of the old wounds of racism and injustice and I'm sure like me you've been praying for God to restore justice but also to bring such a sense of peace on those troubled waters but you know God sometimes allows these things to be revealed again because he wants to say to us this is a new day with a new opportunity and if we will be a people belonging to him committed to his ways we have something to say into those situations we have a God who models true justice and has something to say into the heartaches and the pains of our society has something to say to bring an alignment of true justice in these days 
And I believe that God is giving us those opportunities afresh. But, you know, in times of census, it's also important that we see correctly, that we look at the right picture, because I believe that as the season changes, we need to be those who are positioned rightly to embrace the new. And we're only positioned rightly if our sight is correct. You know, at the beginning of this year, we said the year 2020, that God wants to give his people 2020 vision. In other words, he wants us to see from the right perspective. And he's inviting us to come up here, as it says in Revelation, and see from his perspective. You know, when we embark on the new landscape and lockdown is eased, we could look at lots of different pictures of what the new landscape will look like. And it's always the mix of good and bad. We can look out on the landscape and see what we've lost, see some of the freedoms maybe that we've lost, see the tragic uh, results of a COVID-19 pandemic and say, oh my goodness, the new landscape, will it contain social distancing for so long? Will it always have a sense of, you know, needing to be cautious of one another, not quite knowing how we should relate? Or are we going to look from heaven's perspective at the new opportunities of this day that people perhaps who have realised for the first time in this time of isolation that they're actually lonely, that there is an emptiness within them and have discovered a hunger and a depth of spiritual hunger within them that they hadn't realised was there. You know, I find it really interesting that statistics show that up to 25% of the UK adult population at this time has accessed an online church service during lockdown. That to me says there's an incredible hunger, spiritual desire for God that we've maybe not tapped into. And depending on how we look Look, we need to see the opportunities of this season and I believe God wants to show us that. I was reminded that times of assessment and prior prioritising have always given an opportunity to see through one of two lenses. Either we see through the lens of the old or through the lens of the new. You know, it says in 2 Samuel 24 that King David took a census of the health of his nation. And actually, he did it against the advice of all of those around him. And the reason they advised him not to was that he was actually looking at the wrong picture. And when he took his census, he took a census only of the fighting men of his day, the ones who were part of the army, the ones with swords and spears, and he only numbered them, but he neglected the rest of the population. And God really rebuked him and said to him, David, you've missed the point. This is a shift of season. This is a new day. In this day, you are no longer going to need to rely on the old ways. You're no longer going to need to rely on the old methods of how to do life. The army and swords and spears is no longer going to be the thing that's going to mark out your success. This is a new day and a new era. And David had to repent that he'd only looked through his biased lens. He'd only looked through his human perspective of what makes for a successful nation. And I believe God would encourage us today to say, when you take your stock take of your life, when you make your assessment of your priorities for this new season, when you look out on the new landscape of the nation that you are in, please don't look through the old lens of what made for a successful society. Let's not just see the economy as the driving force in our society. Let's not just see what we are able to build with our own human hands or our own human strategies. But instead, let's come back to a realisation that we are God's people, that we've always been created to do life with God. We are a covenant people and many of our nations actually were founded on a covenant with God, dedicated to the principles and the ways of life that God intended. And we need to go back to those original designs, those original foundations, redig the wells, as it were, and unblock them from the contaminants that have contained them in the last season and begin to believe for the new with God and in new ways. In Exodus chapter 30, another example of a census being taken, God said to Moses, this is the way I want you to take the census, Moses. When you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each individual person must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time that he is counted. 
And interestingly then in verse 12 it says this, then no plague will come on them when they are numbered. Verse 13, each one is to give a half shekel. This half shekel is to be an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half shekel and the poor are not to give less than a half shekel when they bring their offering to the Lord to atone for their lives. Receive the atonement, Moses, from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of meeting and there set up a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making an atonement for their lives. And perhaps we look at that passage and we think, well, that's very Old Testament, making an atonement for your life with offerings and sacrifices. But the fact is, in the New Testament, Jesus has made the atonement for all of our lives. We live in the new era of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh, we all belong to him. We are a people of power and authority and grace. And it's like God is reminding us in this season of census and assessment and stock take that actually the main thing needs to be the main thing again. That we are not to count our wealth or our skills or our abilities, but we are first and foremost to put at the fore our relationship with him. And in bringing that offering, basically we're saying, my life is not my own. I am knit into a covenant relationship with God and I want to offer myself again as a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies again as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. What's the pattern of this world? It's the pattern of how we try and figure out how we should do life. Don't conform to that, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And I believe the cry that has gone up from many of us during this lockdown season is, God, what are you saying? What is your will for our lives in this season? What do you want us to do? And you see that pathway of discovering the new ways for the new days, the new landscapes and horizons that God is opening up, that journey begins with us coming again to rededicate ourselves and I believe this season of lockdown and assessment and census if you want to use that word has been an opportunity to bring our lives again as an offering to him to come and to say each one of us matters find it interesting in the story in Exodus every single life mattered whether they were rich or poor young or old male or female black, white, spotted or wrinkled, each life mattered. And God said, I want each one of you. Each one of you matters, each one of you counts. And I can do the new day with each single one of you who's prepared to go on this journey. So I believe first off, this time of reassessment, this time of lockdown as we emerge from it is an opportunity for rededication. Rededication of our lives, but then also rededication of our nations and a cry from within us to say, God, restore us to our true foundations. Reset us to the plumb line of God in this season. Help us as nations come back to discover what really matters, that Jesus Christ is the only hope for our nations. But then I believe the second question that God would pose to us is, okay, you've dedicated your lives, but what about the landscape ahead of you? What do you see? Will you see only disaster? Will you see only the resurfacing of old wounds and heartaches? Or will you believe for more? Will you dare to dream about the new landscape that lies ahead? Which storyline, if you like, will you join? Will you join the storyline that the enemy wants to lay out in front of you? It's like the twin tracks of life, I think, that Rachel mentioned to us this week. There's always twin tracks. There's the storyline of disaster, the storyline of the enemy's plan for our lives, the storyline to derail us from God's plan and purpose. But then there's the redemptive storyline, the storyline of God's activity, the storyline of what he is saying is our future and our hope. For he says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. So what do you see? What will we see on this new horizon? 
You see, I believe it's so important that we see correctly because what we see will dictate how we speak. And God has said that this new decade of 2020, it's really important that we use our mouths to decree the right things. Where do I get that from? Well, this has been a shift of season. And just as we've started in our Gregorian calendar, a new decade of 2020, so in the Hebrew calendar, the timeline of God, if you like, this is also a new decade. In September, we started the decade of pay, 5780. 80 is 80. That number is associated with a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And the Hebrew alphabet, if you remember, is picture language. And the, it says that 80, the decade of 80, the number 80, is associated with the letter, the Hebrew letter Pei, P-E-Y. What is the Hebrew letter Pei? Well, it pictorially is depicted as a mouth open with a seed inside of it. And that God is speaking over this new decade, that this is a new decade for the people of God to speak correctly, to align their mouths with what God is saying and begin to decree the new day. Why is it important to speak? Well, I believe words have power and words have creative power when they're in the hand of God. Remember, God spoke over the void and said, let there be. And that creative power released things into being that were not yet. And I believe God is inviting his kingdom church to realise that in this decade of harvest, the harvest will come when we begin to decree a new day. That God is saying, see from heaven's perspective and what you see by the eyes of faith, you will then begin to speak into being on earth. What does it mean to decree? Well, to decree is literally to take the reality that exists in heaven and speak it into being to establish it on the earth. God has given you and me an incredible privilege that we can establish on earth that which is not yet, but that which he is saying is available for us in the spiritual realm in heaven. In other words, when we pray, God, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we decree an alignment with heaven. What an adventure that God wants to take us on. But you see, we need to see correctly so that we can speak correctly. And there's a great battle that rages for our voice in this season. And I believe God really wants to encourage you this Sunday morning that your voice matters, that what you speak in this season really has creative power because you know Jesus, because you are partnered with him. And so he wants to encourage you Please don't be silenced. Don't have your mouth gagged. Don't let your voice be silent. I find it very interesting when we look out at our society around us that so many people are now wearing face masks. They're wearing masks that literally cover their mouths. Now, please hear me correctly. I'm not at all making a judgment call or a criticism of the medical need for wearing a face mask. I believe we should absolutely follow the instructions of our public health services and do life well in this season. But I want to just take that as a spiritual picture for a moment, because I believe that in this decade when God says the mouth so matters and what we speak so matters. It's really interesting that it's the mouth that has been the thing that has been covered. And it's almost like, and in fact, it's quite interesting because people have commented that it's so difficult to understand people and hear what they're saying because their mouths are covered. And I just find that an interesting prophetic picture to mull over prophetically with God. And I believe, you know, out there, there are all sorts of entrepreneurs recognising the challenge of not being able to see people's mouths. And they're trying to create masks that have kind of like a perspex, clear perspex plastic piece in front of the mouth so that at least we can see each other's mouths while we're communicating. I just find that fascinating. There is an incredible alignment in the natural with the heavens at the moment and I feel like God's encouragement to us is please don't be silent. Please learn to speak in this season. Make sure that you are decreeing the right thing. This is a season, interestingly enough, when, like Rachel reminded us, God wants to give us double for all our trouble. And in Job chapter 22 and verse 28 in the Amplified, it says this, You will also decide and decree a thing 
and it will be established for you and the light of God's favour will shine upon your ways. I believe God wants to bless you this morning with his favour, that he wants to say I'm shining a new light on the new landscape that lies ahead of you. But I want to partner with you. I don't just want you to be a puppet, but I want you to be a partner with me in creating the new And you might say, well, Helen, I just feel like little old me. I don't know that I'm up for this massive, great challenge. I don't know if I'm even qualified to be one who shapes the new. Well, let me bring you a word of encouragement this Sunday. God has always used very ordinary people, everyday people, and made them the heroes of their day. In Daniel, it says, the people who know their God will do great exploits. It's the people who are like the little boy with his little lunch, bring what they have in their hands and say, God, if you can use me, use me. And how remarkable that God took that little lunch, fed the 5,000 and revealed himself as the bread of life. We think of the woman at the well whose life was a real mess. And maybe for some of us, we feel we're not in the greatest of places. We've got a lot of mess in our lives. Well, let me encourage you that God says, I can use you. Remember the woman at the well with her encounter with Jesus when she committed her life into the hands of the one who quenched every thirst within her. She then turned around and became the one who testified to him, turning a whole village around. It's everyday people who really matter in these days. You see, the seed of the potential of the landscape that lies before us, always potential always comes in seed form. And it's the seed that God wants to put in our mouths to begin to decree the new day. Potential always also is always released through ordinary people. God uses the little old me's and the little old you's. It's a remarkable thing that God does. So crisis would want to derail us onto the wrong path perhaps, but let's join the storyline of God. You know, as I was preparing this, I could just sense the cloud of witnesses in heaven who have gone before us. And I was reminded, like it says in Hebrews 11, that all of those people were very ordinary people, but made to do extraordinary things when they partnered with God. And I sense them in heaven speaking over us today. Come on, run your race. It's time. It's your time. And I feel them saying it's your time now. This is what you are made for. This is what you were created for. This landscape that you're embarking on is perfectly suited to you because God's timing is perfect. You are here for such a time as this. It's no accident. This is your time now. And I want to leave that as a picture with you, the cheerleading of heaven saying, come on, it's your time now. You're perfectly suited for such a time as this. So what does that mean as we emerge onto the new landscape of our new normal? I believe it means that in rededicating ourselves to God, God can use us as leaders of the new. And you look at me and you say, Helen, I don't feel like I'm a leader. I'm just little old me. But what is a leader? How are we supposed to lead in this season? Well, I believe we lead by modelling the new. We lead by modelling what a relationship with Jesus looks like, that we've got God on our side. We don't navigate this new on our own. And how wonderful that people can look at us as signposts of how to do life well. That actually it's not about us and what I can do in my own strength, but it's about me leaning into God. And I felt God give me a little acronym for the word lead. And this is what I want to leave you with this morning. He gave me the acronym L-E-A-D, LEAD. How does he want us to lead? Number one, L. He wants us to lead by leaning into him. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by our clever strategies. It's not by our abilities to track and trace and work out how the path might look, how to manage the future, how to navigate and set up models that might or might not work. It's about us leaning into him. And in our leaning into him, we declare and confess our utter dependence on him for this season. And as we depend on him, he can use us to do incredible things. It's as we lean in him that we discover the new ways and that he gives us revelation. When we lean into him, we have our heads 
firmly in the clouds to receive revelation, but our feet rooted on the ground to then walk out from that place of revelation to do the new thing. I believe we lead L by leaning into him, E by expecting more. I believe God is priming the pump of our expectation in these days. He wants to put hope inside of you and inside of me. He wants us to be dreamers with him, to dream the impossible dreams. Why? Because he is the God who makes the impossible possible. I believe he's saying over your life and over mine and over our nations at this time that this is a time of mission possible, mission possible. But he wants us to expect more. He wants us to bias ourselves, to see the right picture, the picture from heaven's perspective. Lead by leaning into the new, lead by expecting more. Thirdly, lead A by advancing into the new. You know, I believe God only needs us to take one step at a time in this season. He doesn't need you to have it all sorted. He doesn't need you to know the full direction of where you're going. He simply needs you to trust him to help you put one foot forward in front of another. I was reminded of that scripture that says, God, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And in this season, I certainly praying for myself. I know that the full path ahead is not yet clear, but I depend on the one who says his word will guide my every step. And I believe that he wants us to lead by taking one step at a time, stepping out, advancing into the new, not stagnating, but joining his movement of change at this time. And finally, D, he wants us to demonstrate the new normal. You know, I'm so encouraged that whenever God is establishing a new normal, he chooses to pick one person or a group of people to be the demonstration of that new normal. You think throughout the story of the Bible, God always used a person to demonstrate what he wanted to establish. And God said this to me, I always demonstrate what I want to normalise. And I believe that the enemy knows that and he tries to counterfeit that by setting in train a demonstration of wrong patterns for us to follow. And in that, in doing that, he normalises the wrong ways in our society and culture. And often we've seen that. He's normalised injustices. He's normalised different ways of acting that leave God out of the picture. And yet I believe God is restoring to us a new normal that demonstrates his involvement with his people. He wants to demonstrate what he wants to normalise. Jesus, the living word, became flesh to demonstrate what God wanted to normalise for the new season after the season of lockdown and census. And that's the encouragement that I want to leave with us. He can use you. He can use me. Over this coming week for our morning messages of hope, I'm going to look at the stories of everyday heroes, characters from the Bible and characters from history, everyday people who were used by God to really impact their communities and their new landscapes when they embarked out of seasons of change into the new world that they were being called into. And in doing that, I want to prime the pump, put a hope in you that God can use you in this season because that's what he's all about, using everyday people to transform their world. So if you're up for the journey, will you join me? Let's take a moment and just pray. You know, I believe that life can look so different in this next season if we do life with God. And I believe this is a moment for rededication for those of us who have known Jesus for a long time. But you might be listening this morning and not really know if Jesus is the centre of your world. Maybe you've never actually given your life to Jesus. And for you, this moment of shift and change is an opportunity to take stock and to say, you know what? Maybe I do need Jesus to be part of my world for this new normal. And if that's you, it's an opportunity for you to say yes to Jesus, to come and just offer your life to him. How do we become a believer? Well, we simply say, God, I recognise my life is not my own. I may have made some bad choices. I may have messed up, taken some wrong turns. Maybe I've even looked at the wrong perspective, tried to sort stuff out in my own strength. But today, as I assess my life, I want the new day to have you right at the centre of it. 
So let me pray for you, whether you've been with Jesus a long time or just starting out. Father God, I thank you that in this season you are saying that this is a new opportunity and that the new landscapes that lie ahead of us are so exciting when we do life with you. And Father, as we rededicate our lives to you, as we bring ourselves as an offering to you, Thank you that you take who we are and make us extraordinary. Thank you that you are touching our eyes today to see correctly. Thank you that you are touching our mouths that we might speak the right thing in this season. And thank you, Father, that you have given us the privilege to be part of the creative process of this new day. Thank you that you've put a seed word in our mouths to decree the right way and decree the new way in this season and I ask you Father for everyone watching today that you put a new confidence on us that we are enough that what we have in our hands is enough in this season and that you can use us to do extraordinary things Lord I pray that we would learn again to lean into you in this season that we would indeed expect more that we would dare to step out and advance into the new and that we would have a new excitement that you will demonstrate through us the new thing that you want to normalise as our new normal in these days. And through that, we might lead others into greater freedom and greater fun in the days to come. And everyone said, Amen. May, may God richly bless you. May he bless the rest of your Sunday. And do join me next week as we look at everyday heroes who did extraordinary things with God. May God richly bless you today.